Welcome back to Editor's Roundtable. Well, the RBI has cracked the whip on many financial institutions in the recent past due to non-compliance. After Paytm Payments Bank, the Reserve Bank came down hard on Kotak Mahindra Bank this week. Nimesh has more on that. Nimesh, you've decoded the RBI's action against financial institutions in the past two years. Take us through that. Well, Sina, you know, normally we've seen that whenever there's a regulatory action on a particular company or a particular institution, uh, the stocks tend to underperform. But, you know, first the case is... Uh, uh, Kotak Mahindra Bank. We saw a big setback for Kotak Mahindra Bank this week when RBI has cracked the whip on the on the bank. They've said they are they're going to bar uh, uh, the company from uh, uh, you know onboarding any new clients digitally as well as issuing uh, fresh credit cards. So that's that's been the clampdown on Kotak Mahindra Bank, and that's the reason why it was the biggest. Uh, the 12 percent down in two days itself. Yesterday the stock was down 10 percent, and today it was down 2 percent. So it's just a beginning, but the stock was already down. Uh, 12 percent. But if you just look at the past history of all the all the other financial institutions where there's been an RBI cry, RBI whip. Look at HDFC Bank in 2020 in December 2020. Uh, RBI asked uh, to hold all the launches of uh, of new digital businesses uh, and also sourcing of new credit card uh, for HDFC Bank. And what has the stock done uh, since then? Uh, uh, since the since the RBI whip, the stock is down, stock is marginally up, just 5 percent. But largely, it's been it's been uh, pretty much flat to negative. The last one year, the stock is on 10 odd percent. Same is the case with the other uh, you know uh, institutions as well. Look at Paytm. Uh, twice there has been a there has been a clampdown from RBI. In March 2022, they were barred from onboarding new customers, and in Jan 2024, uh, there was a termination of uh, nodal account for uh, for uh, 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 and payment uh, you know payments bank services as well. What has the stock down? It's been a massive underperformer. Uh, since that uh, thing, you know, to 53 percent down since the since the uh, since the whip from RBI. In fact, in the last one, it's uh, one year itself, the stock is on 42 percent. Same is the case with others as well. Look at the next uh, example, m, &M Financial Services. Even they, uh, in uh, in September 2022, they were barred from carrying out recovery and repossession processes. Even the, this stock has relatively underperformed. While well, the stock is up, to, has recovered 25 percent, but <coughs> look at a longer period in the last one year, it's been pretty much flat in terms of returns for m, &M Financial as well. The next stock uh, on the list is uh, I IFL Finance. That's a recent instance. In, in March 2024, there was a there was a clampdown on, on on IFL Finance as well. They were uh, they were asked to uh, they were stopped from sanctioning uh, you know gold loans. What has the stock done? Uh, the stock is down to 32 percent ever since that 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 RBI you know clampdown came. And in, in fact, in the last one year, it's been up one percent. But again, it's a recent instance. So uh, the stock has actually underperformed, which is IFL Finance as well. The next is. Uh, uh, JM Financial. Even for JM Financial, uh, there was a recent RBI action. Even they were barred from, uh, you know, financing against uh, shares and debentures. And even that, has started, even that JM Financial, since that RBI announcement, has actually underperformed. Even that stock is down 35% uh, percent, uh, 17 odd percent since the announcement came. In fact, we, we have a very small history for that, but again, it tends to underperform. However, there has been a big one outlier as well, and that is Bank of Baroda. Well, there has been a big move in the PSU banks, but even Bank of Baroda, there was a RBA action. They were barred from onboarding customers for the for the digital, which is Bob World. But that stock has really outperformed. Uh, since that RBA announcement, the stock is up 21%, but in the last one year, the stock is up 42%. In general, we've seen that whenever there is a RBA action on financial <laughs> institutions, the stock tend to underperform. And, you know, again, that, that's the whole point, right? That should one buy the falling knife? Maybe the history suggests the answer is no. Krishnan, you've been holding into uh, all the financials. What's your take? So in some sense, this is reminiscent of, say, the US FDA crackdown in pharma. Exactly. Wherein, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, there are these idiosyncratic moves that keep happening every now and then. But for in case various. of the US FDA, at least, you know, investors know that there's going to be an action, right? Here, though, it's all of a sudden, you know, IFL, after the announcement, was half. In two days, Kodak Bank is down 12%. So it does increase the risk premium for the sector as a whole, uh, right? Um, but I think one has to see the context of where we are coming in from. See, uh, I think some time back when I was uh, on CNBC, we had said that, you know, banking sector profits uh, as a percentage of GDP were at a 25-year I uh, at 1% of GDP, right? Um, so therefore, the regulator is using the strength of the overall uh, banking system, which can actually afford to take slightly longer or uh, slightly more bolder uh, investments into technology, into compliance, so that they can see a longer runway of growth into the future. So while, yes, there is a temporary setback, but I think uh, banks as a whole will come back even stronger with all of these checks and balances. So um, I think it's, it's, it's more a question of timing and possibly uh, the, the series of uh, 
uh, interventions that have come through, but uh, that's the way it is. Okay, all right. So we've spoken a lot of sectors and stocks, but one factor that the markets are looking forward to is elections, and Prashant's going to address something interesting. You know, people have been complaining all across. It's a quiet election. You know, people have been... So we spoke to two journalists in the morning. They were saying that we will tra travel to Karnataka, this state, that state. Or It doesn't seem like an election. So political pundits and even some in the markets, financial markets who take cues from elections and political events like general elections are talking about how this is a quiet election. So far, of course, at least. Uh, how the voter turnout this time around as compared to 2019 is on the lower side, lower than expected. Why does it matter? So let's just quickly uh, look uh, straight into some of the data points. The total seats, of course, are 543, right? Uh, seats that went to poll in the first phase, and we only have full data for the first phase. For these 102 seats, the average turnout was 67%. For these 102 seats back in 2019 general elections, the number was 71%. So there's been a drop, which we've seen, of about 4% or so. Voter turnout is lower in the Hindi heartland states. And the question which many are asking is because the BJP is uh, so strong and dominant in the Hindi heartland states, does this put the party, party at a bit of, bit of a disadvantage vis-a-vis uh, -vis other parties? Uh, what happened in 2019? I think let's just rewind the clock back. BJP won 40 seats out of the 102, which uh, sort of were, uh, for which polling was done in phase one. Only nine out of the 102 seats which went to polling this time around saw an increase in voter turnout in 24 as compared to 2019. And the states will come up where, you know, there's been a, a larger drop. These are UP, Uttarakhand, Bihar, Rajasthan, Maharashtra, an MP average drop of 5.2% as far as turnout is concerned. And non-Hindi heartland states have seen a lower dip, which is about 2.8 odd percent or so. What could be the potential reasons, right? Uh, the heat wave, it's hot out there across the country. It's been discussed quite a bit. Uh, coincides with wedding season, festivals, but that always does happen. And voter fatigue, complacency, but that's a question mark. It's more of a question at this stage. Uh, IIFL equities, and this is actually, you know, the uh, a crucial part of uh, this particular data point. Uh, IIFL says that the voter turnout, the lower voter turnout, will and should not make a difference to uh, what the BJP can retain and actually even gain. And why do they say that? They've actually looked at all of the 40 seats which the BJP won. Uh, in, uh, you know, out of the 102 which went to poll back in 2019, and they compared some numbers. And what they found is that the, for these 40 seats, the, av the gain that they saw, BJP saw vis-a-vis -vis the second uh, party, the number two party, uh, was, was very large. And this gap between BJP and the number two party is enough to offset any drop in voter uh, uh, voter turnout. So their assumption is, even if you assume that this entire drop in voter turnout goes against the BJP, the lead in these 40 seats for the BJP, in favor of uh, the, uh, the BJP, uh, as opposed to the number two uh, party, whichever it may be, is so large that it does not actually make a difference. So that is their contention. And I think from a market's perspective, uh, you know, people are talking about this and this data point, the statistical analysis by IAFL perhaps should soothe uh, nerves at the margin. Uh, you know, it's a, it, uh, these, are, this is, these are the phases in, in which the election will be conducted. Uh, first two done. And of course, uh, you know, the others, of course, will follow as time goes by. Uh, the hope is, and uh, we, of course, here at CNBC TV, TV 18, certainly encourage everyone to go out and exercise your franchise, uh, go out and vote, and of course, uh, make these elections a success. So we really have uh, no no real uh, insight other than you know um, I guess what what uh, what is the catalyst that we are looking forward yeah. is more in terms of say post government formation I think that is a reasonable uh, market consensus view that uh, the current uh, government is going to come in whatever shape and form and so who will be the key ministries and what their key agenda is i think it's a bigger driver than you know what the exact seat count etc will be is is our limited sense so uh, okay. Not that we can do much about that yeah, either. Low voter turnout. <laughs> right. Well, be responsible, guys. Go out there, make it count, uh, give a, give that vote, and uh, you know increase the voter turnout. And that's all we can say. With that, it's curtains down on this edition of Editor's Roundtable. We'll be back bright and early on Monday morning. Stay tuned.